come check out my website, fishtanksetup.com, the best website in the world. You, sir, please come visit my, no, please. Uh, fish tank setup, come enjoy your fish. The only thing you won't find here is fish recipes. Come learn about your fish. Fish tank setup, how oh, good morning, ma'am. Please come learn about your fish tank, fishtanksetup.com. This is a great website. Please, please check out my website, fishtanksetup.com, the best website in the world hey, to learn all about. Oh, what, hey, Ricky, how's it going? What, uh, good, what, what do we have here? Oh, I'm just trying to get people to come to fishtanksetup.com, you know, a little bit of uh, marketing. You sure that's the best way to spread the word? Well, I mean, it's the only way I could think of. They're not even in color. Yeah. There's probably a better way. Yeah. This is a really great website all about fishies. You can learn more here. Well, I think we all have a pretty good idea of how well this is going to go. <laughs> and the reality is that when you send out mass emails to a whole bunch of other website owners trying to get a backlink or trying to place a guest post, it really only works about that much better. And that's because in order to get any success or move the needle at all, we have to do it in mass volume just huge volume because most people are going to ignore us or they're going to say no. The reality is, is there is a far better way to one, get the coveted backlink, but two, to do something far better. And that is to build expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness, which is what the backlink is meant to gauge anyway. So in this video, that's what we're going to talk about is how to build that EAT by doing proper industry outreach in a way that's going to be way more effective and probably a lot less work. Doing proper industry outreach actually is a lot easier because our success rate is so much higher, but it takes a little bit more pre-work. So today I wanna to walk you through the steps of how we do industry outreach that's substantially more effective. The first step is to literally do the pre-work. It's all the stuff that has to happen before you can do effective industry outreach. So first things first, we need to make our website into something that people would want to collaborate with, that people would want to link to. This is a website that we own fishtanksetups.com. We bought it like two and a half years ago and still haven't actually done that much work to it yet. One of the things that at least I noticed right off the bat looking at it is it doesn't look very good. I don't like the layout. It doesn't feel very modern. I don't like this huge list of categories here on the side. I don't feel like there's a lot of like purpose to the structure here of the homepage. The blog posts don't look that great to me. So there are some major problems, I think, with just how the site looks and feels. But I also discovered quite a while back that just changing the theme wasn't actually going to fix it because this site seems to have some sort of technical issues that weren't getting resolved, even by changing the theme and changing out the plugins and stuff. So I actually decided it would be better to rebuild this website from scratch. And several months ago, I started that process. Here is what that looks like today. This isn't yet the live version of the site, but I hope it will be by the time that this video goes out. So I rebuilt the website using the Akabata WordPress theme that we have, but I built out a custom homepage. This page, it has a blog role here on the front of recent posts, but it also pretty quickly guides you to the three main categories of content on the website. This kind of a content structure is gonna make it a lot easier for people to find what they're looking for um, and have way fewer decisions to have to start with from off right off the bat. But it's also gonna help me when I'm looking to interlink between articles to see which articles are most closely related here on the website. Other things that you're gonna to wanna to do, make sure your site has a good logo. I didn't love how the logo looked when it was on this website, but for some reason on this light background, I actually quite like it. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you have an about page for your website. This is gonna be important just to give a little bit more credibility. So here in the Akabato theme, we actually have this sidebar. This shows up in every blog post, but it also has this button link, which I also um, link in the footer menu over to the about page where I give a little bit more background about my experience. Other things that you may wanna do for your website are one, um, adding schema markup, maybe about you as an author on your website, but also uh, for the organization of the website itself. What schema markup does is it takes certain pieces of information on your website and marks them with certain meta tags in a way that allows search engines to recognize what those pieces of information are so that they can display that information in a nice way in the SERP. If I just search HubSpot, look over here on the right side. There's this card here of information. It has their logo, it has some company information, a brief description, and then just some other information here about the company. This information is information that Google is able to gather in large part because a lot of it is marked up in a website somewhere. So if I go to my own website, this is um, on Fish Tank Setups, but this is using Akabato, which is our WordPress theme. And using Akabato, I'm able to add organization schema here 
right here built in. I don't need an SEO plugin for that. Uh, most WordPress themes don't do this, but you can use Yoast SEO, you can use Ranked Map, and you can add this schema markup probably either to the home page of the website or to the about page that you have on your website. Here I have it set for the home page. So when that home page loads, there's gonna be all this information. For example, the name, uh, which I gave it as Fish Tank Setups, the URL for the site. I put the logo there so that it could easily show up just like this. I went ahead and wrote out a description, and then if I wanted to, I could include all sorts of other information. The founding date, all sorts of things. If I have a product that I'm selling, maybe an info product, I might list that here. Um, and the URL associated with it. And if I have a local address for a service area that I support or something like that, I might include that here as well. Another cool tag that I like is if you are mentioned on another website or something, you could list here the URL of that other site where you're listed, and it's gonna make it clear to the search engines that you are the same uh, fish tank setups <laughs> that was mentioned on that other website. Likewise, I can do the same thing um, here on the user, uh, in the user area where I can update my user bio, the avatar and stuff that's used, I can put some information about me that can be used if somebody searches Rick Kessler associated with fish tank setups. Again, this is just gonna be really helpful, especially because if somebody does a quick search for fish tank setups, because I sent them an email, they can quickly see like not only uh, that I'm ranking at the top, but they'll also be able to see, oh, they've got this other information about them. They must be pretty legit. It may also be worthwhile to create social media accounts, specifically like Facebook and Instagram, a YouTube channel if you're gonna be using video content at all. I might recommend LinkedIn if you're in any sort of a professional niche. I also recommend if you have a physical location associated with your business, go create a Google My Business profile. Create a listing so you show up in Maps but it also is just another place where Google gets information about your business. Customers can even leave reviews for you there, um, especially if you sell a product. So absolutely that's gonna be worth doing if you have a physical location. I mentioned the overall look of the website. If you don't yet have a real logo, I would go get one now. I like to use 48 hours logo if you don't have any experience with graphic design because you can get something that's unique and that looks good and it can be done really quickly and really inexpensively. I have awesome video editors who are also really good at graphic design, but right up until we hired them, we were using 48 hours logo. Okay, that was a really big step one. <laughs> and that is again, just to make sure your website is all ready to put its best foot forward when you're starting to do that industry outreach. We wanna make sure that we present our site in a way that people will want to be associated with us. Step two now is one that we can hopefully do really quickly. And that is we need to shift our mindset. The goal for so long and for so many website owners has been a backlink. When the goal is the backlink, we're willing to just spam the whole internet looking for sites that are willing to let us put on a guest post or that are willing to link back to our website even for a fee. The problem is that if we are buying links to our website, we are literally violating Google's guidelines. Um, this is literally a link scheme and the links are not gonna be of the same quality that we're gonna get if we can do this in a really organic way that's contextual, that fits, that makes sense. It is far better to shift our mindset from link to collaboration. If we can work together with other creators, whether that's website owners, podcasters, YouTubers, or people that create content on any platform, then we can find win-win scenarios where we do something that's really beneficial to them, and as a result, they do something beneficial for us. And along the way, both of us build up more authority and get more traffic. And in doing so, you get your content to rank better organically in search. Along those same lines, when we ask for a link, all we're asking for is a one-off interaction. I'm gonna basically have a transaction with you. I'm gonna do something for you. Maybe I'll put a piece of content on your site, like a guest post. You give me a link, and then we wash our hands of this. Collaboration implies that we want to have a little bit of a professional relationship, which is worth investing more time into. If somebody comes to me and says, hey, I want a link from your website, I'm willing to write a guest post, I say, well, I get dozens of those like every day. So ignore and <laughs> I move on with my day. If somebody reaches out and says, hey, I'd love to work with you to get it in front of your audience and also see how we could work together going forward. Now I'm a little bit more intrigued and I'm willing to at least look into that brand and see if that's somebody that I'm willing to work with. And if they are, I'm willing to invest some time into that relationship, even if it's not gonna work out. Because if it does work out, the benefit is so much bigger. Finding the right people and creating those relationships can be really difficult. That's why for those of you in Project 24, we created these EAT groups. So there's a category in Project 24 under categories here, EAT groups, and then there's a whole bunch of them that just are different depending upon what your niche is, what industry you're in. And that's a great place for you to be able to go reach out and find other people in a very similar niche where you have some overlap. 
and may have an opportunity to work together. And then whether you're in Project 24 or not, I would also recommend going to Google and doing some searches to find who are the other websites in your space that are covering similar topics to you. I went ahead and just did a search for how to reduce diatoms in freshwater aquarium. Diatoms um, essentially create this really brown algae, but that's different than other algae, so it can be pretty tough to get rid of. And what did I find? I found a few articles on these other websites that rank at the very top. Well, this is a particular issue that I have with my fish tank right now and that I'd love to solve. So when I go click on those articles and I look at them, I say, you know what? These are pretty good websites and the articles are pretty good. The information is really helpful. You know, I'd love to try out some of these different solutions that they've presented here. So what I could potentially do is I could go through these different articles, sort of list out what the steps are that they recommend. And then I could go through and I could do those steps on my own fish tank, taking pictures of everything along the way, or even better, make a video doing it. So now I have this awesome resource that I can now reach out to these site owners who I would prioritize. Like, this is the website that I most want to work with. And I'm going to send them an email. If I don't hear back from them after a couple of days, I'll send a follow-up. But basically I'm going to say, look at this, I've created this video or I've created this really neat resource where I walked through all the steps that you gave us and I showed how I did them on my fish tank. I'd love it if you wanted to embed it there. But even if not, thank you so much for the information. That really helped me. That's something that I would love to receive as a site owner. And if it's a really helpful video, I'd be perfectly happy to embed it on my website. And now I've opened the door to potential future collaboration. I'm not just trying to get a link, I'm trying to create a really helpful resource for that other person. So in this third step where we're actually reaching out, there are a few things to keep in mind. First of all, the first way that we're gonna reach out typically is gonna be through emails or direct messages, um, potentially through uh, other social media platforms. We wanna reach out to them and make it really clear right off the bat what's in it for them. And the what's in it for them needs to not just be a fee because that's what most everybody else is offering. It's much more valuable to me as a content creator if somebody can come to me and show me the value that they can provide to my audience. That may be a video, it might be an infographic that I can include on my website. It might be a downloadable PDF that I'm welcome to share with all of my audience. It could be that you did a study and you wanna share some of the data with me. Once we get in the door, we can start looking for opportunities to collaborate further with this person. The other way that we're gonna reach out to other content creators is mostly just by participating in our industry. There are a few different ways to do that. Probably the easiest one is to just get involved on social media. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna go create a Facebook page and then start posting like crazy, trying to get people to like and follow my page. That actually is far less beneficial for a blog today than you may think. You can spend hours and hours and hours and get nowhere. Use that profile to go participate in your industry in existing groups. That's where you can start to get recognized as a helpful participant. Here I am on Facebook and I just searched in groups for freshwater fish and look at this. There's all these different groups that exist about freshwater fish keeping. So I wanna go ahead and join this group and I'm gonna join as fish tank setups. Oh, and they're asking me a couple of questions um, to verify that I'm somebody that should be participating in this group. One of the rules I see in this group is about uh, self-promotion. You shouldn't be posting irrelevant links. You shouldn't be self-promoting a bunch. You need to give more than you take. So this actually plays into the next piece of advice I wanna give. When I'm participating in groups in this manner, I'm simply going to be helpful and answer the question. It's not that difficult to see that the profile that I'm using is a page, not a person. And so if the person decides to click on that profile because they're grateful that I was super helpful, they're gonna find my page and it's gonna link back to my website. Most importantly though, what's gonna happen is that you gain a reputation of being really helpful. This is actually a strategy that my mom used for a long time, participating in quilting groups. She joined the groups and just would answer questions using the profile that she created or the page that she created for her business. And it didn't take a lot of time before people started really trusting the things that she said. And even today, that she hasn't been actively doing this for a long time, even today, that Facebook group sends a lot of traffic over to her website. This can also be a great way to sort of get introduced to other people in the industry who may or may not be heavy in the blogging space, but maybe content creators elsewhere. Again, like in a podcast, other social media, or even on a YouTube channel. The next way I'm gonna do outreach is I'm gonna use one of the existing platforms to find podcasters who are looking for people to interview. And I'm gonna look for podcasters who interview people in the pets or even specifically in the fish keeping space. And I'm gonna reach out and I'm gonna pitch to them why they might wanna interview me. It's not that hard to do. There are a few of them out there. Podmatch is one that comes to mind that I've used, gotten several interviews for the Income School website and YouTube channel on people's podcasts. Just by having a profile 
on Podmatch. And then lastly, and this is kind of taking it to the next level, but participating in industry events, actual conferences and even virtual conferences, just attending and talking to people and networking with them can be a great way to make connections with other content creators within your industry, which will lead to those collaborations. As long as, again, you present yourself as helpful rather than as someone who just wants to take and get that backlink. I do wanna highlight one important principle, and that is that you are not ready to do any of those things until you have one, done the pre-work and made your website the kind of website that people would wanna be associated with. But number two, it's not worth it to do these activities until you've written 30 to maybe even 50 blog posts on your website. It doesn't make sense to send people to a website when there's not very much content on it yet. But once you've started to really populate that website with a lot of good, helpful content, then the links back to your website, the, the sending people to go look at it to determine if they even want to work with you, you're going to be substantially more effective. We need to build up the content first. If you haven't done that yet and you're in that phase of your website, I invite you to go check out this playlist. It's all about how to create amazing content that's gonna drive traffic to your website, but also make your website phenomenal, the kind of website that a lot of other people are gonna to wanna to link to and collaborate with. We'll see you all next time.